Mob rule is coming to America. Violent clashes erupted between Unite the Right protesters and so-called anti-fascist counter-protesters at the foot of a General Robert E. Lee statue designated for removal in Charlottesville, Virginia. An Ohio man associated with the white nationalist marchers rammed his car through a wave of people. He struck and killed 32-year-old Heather Heyer and has been charged with second-degree murder. I was in Charlottesville this weekend and had the chance to talk to some of the people living in and around the city. As a thunderstorm rolled in on Saturday evening, a waitress at a restaurant I ate at said, let's hope this washes the day away. A local gas station attendant told my wife, these people from out of town, Nazis, Black Lives Matter, they're all hate groups to me. The overwhelming feeling I got was that the rioters who had descended upon their city didn't represent the community. What happened in this quaint central Virginia town was ugly and shocking, but clearly wasn't the end of civil discord rocking American cities. Following the Charlottesville protests, a gathering of left-wing agitators marched down the streets of Durham, North Carolina to the county courthouse. The angry mass turned its fury on a Confederate statue dedicated to the boys who wore gray. They toppled the monument, cursing, spitting, and kicking the century-old bronze visage of a southern soldier which lay crumpled on the ground. These were ugly scenes reminiscent of the French Revolution or the war in Iraq, but ones that will become increasingly common if tribal politics continue unchecked in this country. While many are calling for the removal of Confederate monuments en masse after these events, it must be remembered that American heroes like Thomas Jefferson and George Washington will also be put under the microscope and designated for destruction. This week it's Robert E. Lee. I noticed that Stonewall Jackson's coming down. I wonder, is it George Washington next week? And is it Thomas Jefferson the week after? You know, you, all, you really do have to ask yourself, where does it stop? This has already happened. In 2016, students protested references to Thomas Jefferson at the University of Virginia, the school he founded, because he had owned slaves. Of course, Jefferson is the author of the Declaration of Independence, whose ideas led to slavery being expelled from this nation forever. That didn't matter. Jefferson was politically incorrect and needed to be purged. Another protest gathered at the American Museum of Natural History in New York City demanding that a statue of racist Theodore Roosevelt be removed. The question is, where does this all end? It would be a mistake to give in to those who want to erase American history, or the thugs who want to promote lawlessness and sheer tribalism. American towns and cities are now increasingly being besieged by agitators who flaunt the law, direct their hate toward fellow citizens, and openly attack the critical principles at the heart of the American way of life. The narrative is increasingly join us or be crushed. Abraham Lincoln once said that mob rule, if left unchecked, will continue to build step by step till all the walls erected for the defense of the persons and property of individuals are trodden down and disregarded. America's history is worth remembering and even celebrating. As Ronald Reagan said in his farewell address, it is important for informed patriots to stand up for the ideas that have made America great. Our history shouldn't be buried because a few evil men have twisted it to serve their causes. Nor should mob rule be allowed to fester and plunge communities into chaos.